Hello and welcome to Sound, Sound Dance Festival. My name is Emily May. I'm a dance writer and critic and I'm speaking to you from Berlin in Germany. So we've just seen Sound of Silence and now is our chance to hear from the artists about the performance. And, but before I kick off with some questions, I'd like to invite the performers and panel members to introduce themselves and where they are speaking to us from. Yeah, hey, uh, my name is Mari Boer. I'm a dancer and a choreographer in the piece Sound of Silence. And I'm speaking to you right now from Reykjavik in Iceland. Hi, my name is Maria Ulusa. I am also um, a dancer and a choreographer in the Sound Piece of Silence, as <laughs> Piece of Sound of Silence. And um, I am talking to you from, from Norway, from, uh, from the West in Norway. Yeah, and my name is uh, Gert Barnhaug, and I'm a musician and composer uh, in the piece uh, Sound of Silence, and I'm speaking to you from Tromsø in Northern Norway. Thank you so much for joining us. So I wanted to come off with a few questions, and my first one, maybe Mari, you could uh, begin with this, by telling us a bit about how the three of you came together as collaborators and what in initially interested you in each other's work. Yeah, so uh, I met Maria when we were doing our uh, BA in uh, contemporary dance. So we went and we were in the same class and um, worked together for three years. And then when we were finished, we kind of continued working together. Uh, so I was really interested in just the way that we moved together is, is really nice. And, and we kind of fit each other in that way. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's why we ended up, or that's why I ended up working with Maria. <laughs> and then uh, I did, we did our BA in Oslo. And then when I came to Tromsø, which is where I'm originally from, I met Gerta, who uh, was then working, we were uh, doing the Insomnia Festival together. And I was really interested in the way that he was talking and working with music. And um, it was sort of the first performance that I ever did uh, was in Tromsø with Gerta and Maria. Uh, where we're kind of starting to explore this with the gravity and the kind of feeling heaviness of uh, electronic music so it was the sort of um, just like the initial start of kind of getting to know electronic music for me and and understanding what it's about yeah uh, so yeah that's why I started working with Gerta <laughs> and Maria maybe you could say a little bit about this piece specifically how did you come together for Sound of Silence and what were the initial things that you started talking about and themes that you wanted to explore? Yeah, well, um, so we, we knew each other from before then because we had already done one production together and um, uh, when you work with nice people you want to continue to do that so um, I think we just all inspired each other to um, to, to continue working together and uh, Gerte has a lot of knowledge about programming and um, I don't even know the <laughs> correct terms here Gerte but uh, like the electronic music and how you can program things how you can record things and uh, like a lot of things that we don't know anything about but I think what was interesting was whenever we had an idea like oh maybe we could uh, put a microphone in a jacket and, and make a um, make these and these sounds and blah 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 that would be so cool and, and Gerte would always say yeah yeah it's possible everything is <laughs> possible yeah. so um that was just very triggering uh, we wanted so it was just we felt felt like there were so many possibilities that we uh, had uh, with him so that's how we started i guess and um the main kind of inspiration was how can we uh, use just only the sounds that we create uh on stage uh with our bodies movements uh, as, as a sound for the performance mm. And you, you mentioned there about that starting point, and I read in your program information that you want to try and challenge the audience to rethink the relationship between sounds and actions that we see on stage. Um, and I was a bit interested in why you think that this relationship needs a rethink, and do you think that there are some kind of traditionally some kind of subconscious hierarchies between dance and music where one leads the other? Um, and whether you wanted to kind of challenge this and change this in your performance. Yeah, I think traditionally you have sort of uh, a division between in, in dance performances where, where the music is already pre-recorded and it it's sort of hidden, and you have these performers uh, 
uh, moving to the music in that way the sort of the, the music is set and the performance are sort of sort of secondary in one way but even if there are it's the performers you actually see, not the people making the music. So it's a very strange relationship. And I think some of this comes from the fact that many, many years ago, uh, I was involved in a pro project where we did something similar with using sort of sensor-based technology on dancers and they could sort of move and you, that changes the sounds that are made. But it becomes very sort of disconnected because the sounds come from somewhere hidden in this black box. Uh, computer which nobody really knows what this is doing uh, so it's trying to sort of establish a real relationship uh, a relationship that is both sort of concrete uh, but also shows some of the problematic issues with sort of uh, we we sort of listening to something and seeing something and how we sort of subconsciously connects and disconnects these sounds mm -hmm. so and so in that way also the piece become a li a quite more simple and stripped down because it's it's you see how the sounds are made and in that way you try to sort of establish a connection uh, in some way which is have which I've, I've felt that sort of often disappears in many uh, experiments with sort of movements and sounds because you 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 base yourself on this black box uh, digital technology instead. So it's a it's it's a sort of a um, long, complicated <laughs> issue about how to, to to sort of work with sound and how the relationship is between what you see and what you hear and how you connect these things in your sort of mind when you are watching. And leading on from that and about how the sounds are made. Obviously, when I was watching it, you can definitely see the like how it uh, directly linked the sound of the music are, but sometimes um, like a sliding hand might make this kind of crackly noise that you might not expect so much. Um, and I was wondering if you could maybe talk a little bit about the technical side of how the sounds are made and the, the links between the movement and the sound and how it worked. Uh, yeah, because it's, 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 it's based on very much microphone technology, which is very old fashioned. Uh, and you always perceive I often perceive microphones as being sort of a, a sort of transparent recording medium, but they sort of have a sound of their own. So often you get, uh, by using a microphone, you get something that is quite different from what you would think it was. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is something that sort of becomes apparent in many situations. Uh, and I think also it's something we sort of worked a lot about with how to make different <laughs> sounds and sort of how to implement it in the choreography. So you think it would sound in one way, but when sort of we started working with it, it becomes this totally different result. Uh, uh, and it's something to, to, to sort of experiment with. Yeah. So I think that was a sort of a, a key thing in much of the choreography that uh, Maria and Maria was uh, working on. Yeah. Sort of how to actually make sounds. Mm -hmm. And in leading on from that, maybe Maria and Maria, you could talk a little bit about your choreographic process and how you use this inspiration to experiment with movement and create the, the choreography. Yeah, it, it was, it, it kind of worked both ways. In some, some uh, parts of the performance, it was about trying to make a certain sound or kind of like the feeling of a sound or like generate sounds that we were thinking could be nice to record. Um, but for example, in the last part, uh, we ended up recording just like the first sounds that we make on the floor. Because when you start recording like a body moving fast and two different bodies moving fast, it, it just really sounds quite different than you imagined it would. So, so it, was, it was sort of like a combination of trying to first, what does this sound like? Or, or how can I make this kind of sound? So it's like a kind of like a collaboration between the movement and the sound, what, what comes first and what inspires like the, the other in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was, um, it was interesting to see how the sounds actually um, uh, come through a microphone because when we first started working, it was just me and Mari. We had the two week residency and Gerti couldn't join us. Mm -hmm. So we had so many ideas like if we do this, this is going to sound like this, but it wasn't the case at all. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> when we talk about hierarchy, uh, it's, it's kind of funny because in this piece, in one way, the kind of the, the main uh, leader or the we were kind of submitted to the 
the sound or the microphone or the technology more in this piece um, in many ways we we couldn't do exactly what we wanted to uh, in terms of choreography yeah. um, so but that's it, kind of what look at it mm -hmm. but was there also because obviously so much was thinking about the relationship to the sound was then what were your thoughts in terms of like the aesthetics and how the the movement looked at all how much did that influence or was it very much just thinking about how what sounds it made and it was of course the aesthetic is also always gonna i don't know if we can ever kind of leave it behind it's so ingrained in us from from uh, dance education it's just like uh, you know can't get get away from it but we were talking about also that it doesn't have to like when we're doing the same movement it's not important for me at least that we do it exactly the same way it's not supposed to be like a corps de ballet it's supposed to be more of a like a feeling or a motivation or kind of the um like the uh, generated generated from like the same place Mm -hmm. which sounds a bit weird but it, it's sort of like a you know like the <laughs> that has to be the same and that is kind of the important part and not exactly like this hand is supposed to be exactly the same as the other hand it's more kind of the the energy behind it was important in that sense but of course i, I mean we made um like the physical movements is something that we've been working through and, and trying to kind of uh, like the aesthetic part of it is always going to be there that we like a certain aesthetic or we like want this movement to be this kind of way mm. yeah so that's also part of it mm. and leading on from that you say it's, it's not necessarily the exactness of placement of a hand or something but the energy how much of the performance is fully structured and choreographed or is there any moments of like improvisation or things that change performance to performance i think yeah um, there's a lot of improvisation um but we have like a, a frame that we sort of follow and certain um points where uh, things are choreo uh, choreographed um but within that there's mainly improvisation and um i think the falling sequence is quite set mm -hmm. um, yes it does the, like of course like some differences between like if when the recording starts and and how you end up falling and some of the falls are random so it's yeah that's true uh, yeah. yeah it's, it's a, a mix in in general and uh, the end, end sequence is also quite set uh, mm -hmm. also on on kind of a more a rhythm right um yeah yeah but we are mostly work a lot now with the improvisation and our that's uh, what i think is is our main the main way of working Mm -hmm. And how does this affect the relationship with you, Goethe, like as a musician on stage, how do you interact or make sure you're in tune uh, with the dancers while they're improvising? Uh, oh, it, it of course makes it very much more difficult because you sort of have to have a flexible programming and a flexible approach to what is going on. But uh, as from the sort of point of view of the performance, it's, it's more or less the point because we could have made a, sort of faked everything and make it made this very very strict choreography uh, uh, sort of make an illusion that what you are seeing is what you hear but it's this randomness and this improvisational aspect is what actually gives it the flavor that makes it in one way work because mm -hmm. it will always sound different and it's so apparent that it's sort of the, the energy and the, the, the sort of the impulses that are important not sort of every detail have to be correct and and, and uh, the same every time so it's a sort of a pre re, sort of a, 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 it has to be <laughs> improvised to, to to make it work the concept yeah. otherwise it would just you could just fake it sort yeah. of make a strict choreography and have some sounds on make it look like an sort of illusion that what they are doing are producing the sound yeah Amazing. And um, we've talked a lot about sound and movement, but I also noticed watching it that there's, it seems quite important moments of kind of silence as well and moments of stillness in the choreography. Um, and I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about this and how this helps to structure it or why these choices were made. Yeah, when we were making it, uh, I, I think it was important for all of us to have, to have this like moments of silence because there is, of course, sounds in that as well. It's the sounds of the audience and it's the sound of the bodies that are breathing or kind of every, there's always some sort of sound going on. 
uh, but it's this stillness I think is important in as a also like a dramaturgical element of kind of trying to make a sort of like uh, structure to the piece to have some parts that are more uh, dynamic or kind of more explosive and then to let the audience breathe or kind of take in the room and take in the sounds mm -hmm. um, so the moment of silence or it, it, it is important I think also yeah just in like uh, the tiny movements that happen when you're supposed to be still I don't know there's something interesting in that as well I think yeah, nice. definitely, because I, I noticed that there's this one moment where you just put the microphone to your neck and then even though you're being still or not saying anything, you still get this kind of feedback from the microphone. So it kind of makes yeah. it, uh, even when we think there's stillness or even when we think there's sound, there is still so much going on. And also with the, I think it's so funny with the, this camera is just so interesting. I mean, I could probably just play with it all day because it's so yeah. funny. And we were trying to get it just... Uh, because you can also at some point you can hear like the breathing because it goes through the neck and if if i forget that i have it and i start talking it's just like the most explosive sound ever and it's, it's really interesting how you can kind of capture this super tiny sounds and like you were saying with the microphone having its own sound as well that's also quite something i didn't really consider before we started putting it on on the body and kind of it makes its own sounds mm -hmm. which is nice um, and Mari and Maria, have you worked with, because obviously there's points in the piece where it's not just your body's making sound, but you use your voice as well. And have you worked much with voice before in previous, or was this something new to you in this collaboration? To me, it's quite yeah. new. Um, I mean, we've had, um, we've had a little bit, we've touched a little bit on it, on our education, but it was never something that um, inspired me to go further into it. To me, dance is, uh, has, um, mainly been about movement and, and nonverbal expression mm -hmm. so um so it, that was kind of strange to to use uh to use the voice in the piece so i don't need, do i even use my voice i think it's you mari mm -hmm. maybe it's just me <laughs> yeah maybe yeah, it's it is only, just me. it is actually only mari <laughs> yeah but, uh, <laughs> i remember once if we were sort of working a lot with that if we, should we have voice uh with that sort of break the contract and 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 I think we were working very much at one point it was maybe also Maria having a voice uh, uh, yeah. so we were I think we were working with it this whole, <coughs> whole concept of how it could be implemented into the performance mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah but it also it gradually oh sorry you sorry <laughs> no it gradually became more uh, like the piece that you're, you saw like the new digital digital version has less talking in it than the original version mm -hmm. which is sort of like a it, it's not just developed that way it's a bit less uh like a like a conversation in the in the verbal sense mm -hmm. um but it it yeah yeah mm. that leads me quite well onto my next question about the digital version because obviously i i saw a live performance recording but you've been creating this digital version for sound dance um, and I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about what the process has been like in transforming it uh, into a piece for this online festival rather than a live performance piece. Uh, one of the things we try to, to sort of solve is that the, 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 the performance is very much based on the room that people are sitting in the room and everything is visible the lighting every cable everything is in in sight of the uh, of the of the audience there's nothing that's hidden behind anywhere so every technical thing everything that is going on every moving of objects are visible because you you're always taking the whole room uh, and that has been sort of a challenge but also maybe a possibility to sort of make some sort of um, uh, direction on where you're going to to see what is important and also you can uh, uh, um, sort of see some close-ups of the of the connections of, of, of what's going on uh, so we try to, to sort of do things a little bit different uh, and think about those aspects uh, in the sort of digital version mm -hmm. Yeah, we talked about because of course like when Corona happened everything that was supposed to happen during the summer got cancelled 
and and people have been talking and experimenting with digital versions of everything uh, and at first it was just I was very upset and quite annoyed by it because I just uh, you know this feeling of kind of having the audience there is not the same of course if you're digital it's, it's never going to be the same mm -hmm. but for this project it was kind of the only project that I felt uh, that it was sort of like a, a fun next challenge or because we're working so much with technology uh, like in the original version as well so it kind of became a natural progression where you can actually use the film medium in a way to sort of highlight certain aspects of the performance that you wouldn't maybe necessarily think of when you're looking at the stage so yeah. using like the digital version to kind of enhance the experience or kind of at least direct the where the audience is, is looking a bit more yeah which is yeah mm -hmm. a great opportunity and of course unfortunately maria you weren't able to because you're uh, staying somewhere else, you weren't able to perform for the digital version. Uh, but have you been involved in the conversations and the, about how it's being developed? Um, a little bit, um, but uh, in, I think it came together very fast in the end. Um, so I, I, we, I, we had some conversations, but uh, I, I also just felt like I had to leave it up to the people who were actually there in person to make to make the decisions and um, uh, yeah, it turned out to be really great. Yeah, well, I'm really looking forward to seeing it as part of the festival, um, as well as having seen the, the live recorded version. Um, and I think that that's all we've got time for in terms of questions now, but thank you so much, Mari, Maria and Goethe for joining me and all your wonderful insights. Um, so to our audience, if you'd like to find out more about Sound Arts Festival, uh, you can find all the information you need, uh, including the full festival program on our website, which is www.sounddance-festival.de. And thank you so much and have a lovely day, everyone. <laughs>